cool stuff. We have uh, recently done a Wordless Wednesday on the Tinkercad blog. You may or may not have seen um, that is fantastic. It is this. You can see it right behind me. Up there? Over there? It's hard oh. to save the world. Oh, it's hard to save the world when you have ads popping up. Anyway, uh, this Wordless Wednesday was about a couple things. Bob's Burgers, personal favorite of yours truly. Um, uh, with our new characters, our new uh, uh, Tinker Team, we have... Uh, you know, it's weird. A lot of superhero teams and a lot of cartoons and like really dynamic groups are in um, odd numbers. That's food for thought. So... In this case, we have five. We have a family. Uh, Bob, Linda, uh, what's her name? Tina, Louise, and... Oh, my... Jean! Jeez. Wow. Uh, brain fart. Anyway, the Belchers, right? So we have them in Tinkercad. Uh, this was fantastic. This was a couple hours' work, and then I thought, hey, you know what? Let's see what they look like were they to walk off the screen and I want to show you how to do this today so this workflow is really simple unfortunately it's buried no one knows how to do this or if you do you're you're way beyond I am I had to figure this out and I was just exploring Fusion 360 and found this really great way to take a model from Tinkercad um, and it's actually kind of a series of very fortunate events that has allowed this to happen because once we did our Minecraft um, viewer a few months ago, that opened up uh, OBJ models to be exported in a way that we could do this in Fusion 360. So this is all like perfect storm of awesomeness. So let's do it. I want to show you how to take a thing in Tinkercad and take it over to Fusion 360 and make it into, um, well in this case not too too real, but like these could be little characters and toys. It's, it's fantastic. Um, so let's just get started. In Tinkercad, uh, here's the actual Bob's Burgers model um, that's, a, that's essentially one of the examples of the Tinker Team Up, which is our current, current uh, community challenge. If you haven't made a model for the Tinker Team Up, do so, uh, because this process is going to be involved in the prizes that we have in store for our favorites. So, this is pretty great. Let's just take Louise, because you guys, not only is she uh, everyone's favorite, but I'm particularly proud of her model, uh, if nothing else, because, I mean, it's Fox, she's got big ears, she was perfect to wear the, wear the uh, Louise's hat, but look, she's got little pigtails! How cute is that? And a little green dress. So let's just take Louise. We're going to take her into Fusion 360 and make her uh, realish. We're going to render her. So, how do we do that? We start in Tinkercad. We have a model. It's done. It's grouped. Uh, let's get the file that we need. I'm going to select her. So, with that object selected, it, uh, back up one second, it does or does not need to be grouped. But I've grouped it just so that I can move her around independently of the others. What we're actually doing, let's think about this. So on the Minecraft pane, Minecraft, uh, the voxelizer in Tinkercad, um, basically the way that we set this up was so that uh, every model, everything in Tinkercad had a particular color. So every color that was available to you in Tinkercad has a corresponding material in this Minecraft editor. And the way that the team set that up paved the way to do what we're doing now in Fusion. So keep that in mind that every color in Tinkercad will be exported or treated as an independent object, right? So everything that's red will be an object. Everything that's black will be an object. Everything that has a, uh, everything of a color will be an object. Much like in the Minecraft editor, where everything that is white, in this case, go. Go. It's thinking. There we go. Everything that is, uh, let's say, red, like Linda's shirt, is made of TNT. Everything that is yellow is a sponge. 
you know, you can change everything that is yellow. You see uh, Tina's barrette, Jean's nose, and his shirt. You know, you can actually change those things. So that's just a, an example of what, what's happened. So let's go back to the editor. You don't really need to know that, but it's just helpful. So once I have uh, little Louise selected, I'm going to go to export. And that gives me the options of what to download. So for this case, I want to just, just download the selected shape. But instead of an STL, which I would normally do for 3D printing, I want to do an OBJ file. The only difference between an STL and an OBJ really is that an OBJ carries um, color information. And in this case, the color information is basically what objects are a different color. So say you have 10 colors in a model, and OBJ carries that, that information that there are 10 different entities of different colors. Okay, that's a simplification, but that's really all we need to know for this. So click OBJ. It prepares my little model for export. Uh, you can't see this dialog box, but it says where you want to do. I want to save it. Whoop. Saved it. Done. Basta. Out of Tinkercad. So now, let's go over to Fusion. All right, now we're in Fusion. What? Fusion 360? That's a professional tool. Uh, yes and no. I mean, well, yes, but um, I'd like to challenge people to uh, go further in their tinkering. So Tinkercad is fantastic. So, I mean, personally speaking, that's all I really use. Because at the end of the day, I just got to put a hole in a thing and I want to 3D print it. That's great. Now, the possibilities within that are really, really great. But with Fusion, you can do some stuff that's not even comprehensible in Tinkercad. So like what we're doing today, which is realistic rendering. Um, you can do some other things like simulation and sculpt and sketching. Um, story for another time. We'll do those later. But for today, I want to exploit the render function of Fusion 360. So one thing, Fusion 360 is free. Uh, it says it's a subscription model, but it's a subscription. If you use Fusion 360 as a business and you're making more than 100000 a year with your business using Fusion 360, if you are anything like I am, that is not applicable to you. So for you, Tinker, uh, Fusion 360 is free. Go to autodesk.com slash fusion or just Google Fusion 360 uh, and it will bring up the download. Uh, there is a desktop version, meaning, meaning or it's, there's a desktop interface. It's local, but it is also cloud uh, base cloud stored so you're actually doing back and forth from the cloud it's actually pretty cool uh, because it does stuff local but then sends up the cloud when it needs to so all that to say open fusion 360 once fusion 360 is open um, you'll see this now for me I have experience in inventor Autodesk inventor I've used a bunch of different CAD stuff uh, but I stay in Tinkercad somewhat decidedly if not only because it's my job uh, but I like Tinkercad now with that said for those of you in that uh, coming from that mindset you're like what fusion is what where do you even start um, so let's just get started in this way ignore everything Ignore everything in Fusion except these things that I tell you today. Um, you can explore. You can run around and do stuff to your heart's content, but the, the dialogues and interfaces between Tinkercad and Fusion are vastly different. Now, as a company, we're trying to actually bridge those gaps and make workflows a lot easier. But, for example, what we're doing today is kind of buried. So, um, whatever that means. It's fantastic, but we're going to try and surface these kinds of things for Tinkercad users because, um, you know, I just want to make my stuff look cool in this particular thing. So, Autodesk Fusion 360, it's open. It's fantastic. Now what? This took me like an hour and a half to figure this out, but if you go up to the top left, oddly enough, this little thing called a data panel looks exactly like the Tinkercad dashboard button in the Tinkercad editor totally fortunate so if you click that data panel that's going to open up this window and that's where all your models live now if you're just opening fusion for the first time you don't have any models 
not surprising. But once you start making things, that's where these things will live. And you'll see, I've been going crazy with this render uh, situation. I've been pulling things from the gallery and throwing them into Fusion 360 just to see what they look like as real things. I'm not going to show you everything because some of these things are uh, current entries in the community challenge, the Tinkercad, the Tinker Team Up challenge, and they look fantastic rendered. Uh, but I'll tease those out later in the month. Stay tuned. So what we're going to do is uh, find our Louise and bring her into Fusion 360. So uh, like I said, everything in Fusion 360 is stored on the cloud. Um, so what we need to do instead of, this is one kind of sticking point with Fusion, is you can't just upload something from your computer. You can, but you're actually uploading it to the cloud so that Fusion can find it and download it to your computer as a Fusion model. So what we're going to do is upload. Let's select that file. I'm going to find... Now, this is a zip. So, let me get rid of that. One thing I forgot to tell you is that your OBJ will download as a zip file. And so all you have to do is open that zip file by double-clicking it um, if you're on Mac. And then once you've done that, you go into that folder. You can see I've done this a few times with the Bob's Burgers things. There's two files. One's called an obj.mtl and one's called a tinker.obj. Both of those should come into Fusion. If you download or upload, I suppose, uh, both of them, hit go. Oh, I must have hit it twice. Um, that's thinking. Complete. Complete. Now you see over on the left-hand side here, it's thinking. It's thinking. By the way, if you know what this guy is, He's in the Tinkercad gallery. Looks amazing rendered. So once that's done thinking, all we're really going to do <coughs> excuse me, is double click that little thumbnail and it will open a model for us. But while we're waiting, let's look at the Fusion dialog. I'm going to close that data panel just while it's doing its thing. And... Again, I, when I first jumped into Fusion, I didn't know where to start. So on the left-hand side, there's these workspaces. If you click that, there's a drop-down. you got model, patch, render, animation, simulation, cam, drawing, and sheet metal. Well, you won't have sheet metal because I'm special. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we're going to work in render. So if you click render, this is the workspace that we're going to be working in. Uh, let's check on our data panel upload. He's still thinking. While that's going, we'll just start something else. Uh, let's try our bear. All right. So when you download some, or excuse me, upload something into Fusion 360, chances are, if you if you brought it from Tinkercad, the axes are going to be a little bit flip flop. So every model that I've brought in from Tinkercad as an OBJ. Uh, is face down. So his north and south are messed up. Easy enough to fix. Uh, if you click and drag, you can select the whole thing. And then uh, right click will give you this crazy complicated dialog box. All you need is move copy. Don't even worry about it. You can also go up here to modify and that you'll, have, you'll see move copy on that as well. But once you have move copy, um, these handles similar to Tinkercad will pop up. And this guy is a rotate. You just want to move him 90 degrees. Boop. And hit enter. Here's a big key difference uh, between Fusion and Tinkercad is you basically have to confirm every action that you do. So if you want to move a model or rotate it, you have to hit enter to confirm it. So... That's that. That's basically all the modeling that we're going to do in Fusion 360 because we did all our modeling in Tinkercad. Now I know this isn't this isn't Louise because she is loading. She's still loading. 
Maybe. <gasps> oh, yay! Okay, so there we go. There we got Louise. Let's do that again. Select all. Let's do it this way this time. Modify, move, copy. Move copy is a little misleading. You're not really moving or copying. You're turning or rotating. That's okay. Um, whoop, boop. And in this case, it was 270 degrees. Riddle me that. I don't know. Uh, but there's our model. There's. Let me get rid of that one. Um, there's our little Louise. She is in Fusion 360. She's standing up right. Uh, but now she's way down here on the left hand side. You can't realize. I don't want to save that. Sorry about that. Uh, we're going to use these tools. So down here, once we get into the render thing, these are your best friends. Uh, orbit, pan, and zoom. All you need to know. They're all the camera controls. Let's click orbit, and then I'll just click anywhere on, on the model. <coughs> Pardon me. And that will uh, sort of move the camera to it. And then once you click, now click and, click and hold orbit, and that's just like Tinkercad where you're sort of rotating the camera pan click and drag that's pan just like in Tinkercad the, the biggest the biggest difference is zooming and this is kind of annoying for me you have to click zoom and then click the center of your model and move in and out you know in Tinkercad you can use two fingers on the on the trackpad or your mouse wheel to scroll in and out in Fusion 360 if you don't have a three button mouse you have to do it this way um, you get used to it but that's what that is so we have Tina in. She's upright. Good camera. Let's click this uh, workspace. We're going to go into render. For this process, all you need is a rendering uh, workspace. And then right away at the bottom, you see this rendering gallery. Um, I think my face is in the way, but you have a rendering gallery. Maybe I'll watch this. Now you have a rendering gallery. <clears throat> These are just basic uh, renders that happen when you bring the model into Fusion to begin with. Um, you can ignore them. I do. Let's minimize that. We'll come back to it later. So now we have our little uh, foxy Louise. And if you hover over the model, you see what I mean by every color that we, uh, everything that we assign the color to in Tinkercad um, is now an independent object infusion that is great because that's going to be the way that we differentiate colors and materials so right now uh, she's made of graphite or hematite depending on your uh, your jam so click appearance on the top left is this little uh, button this is where you're going to do most of your heavy lifting in fusion is the appearance and this is where we're going to assign colors or materials depending on your thought um, to these different objects and I realize now I'm covering this up so I'm just gonna go back over here here we go let's get going so first thing I know that her little feet and the tip of her tail and her nose are white so on this little materials list you have all sorts of stuff in all sorts of folders um, right now all of these colors and materials are not um, you can't add more. I was a little bummed about that, but you can all, you can edit some of these, which is really all you need to do. We'll do that in just a second because orange and pink are not defaults in Fusion 360. So that's good because then we can figure out some other things. So let's just start going. We'll go. Um, here's a little cheat. Plastic. Opaque is all that I used for these guys with the exception of Bob which we're not gonna do um, but most of these colors and materials have an option to do matte or glossy you can experiment with them some of them are really cool you can also do like light emitting materials that's pretty cool in fact we'll make our eyes glow here in a second uh, you can do texture you can do like leather and skin and all sorts of stuff that's pretty cool but for these, I want to make them just a matte finish uh, so that they look like little plastic toys. And I think that'll be great. So let's do... Uh, da, 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 da. Do we want to do glossy? No, we want to do white. We want to do matte white for her. Shoes, chest, and tail. See? So 
So now I just assigned color to one thing, but remember everything that was a color is now a single object. So by clicking it or by assigning it to one object, it's all those objects. That makes sense. And then let's see her nose. We want her little nose to be shiny because she's a healthy canine. And that, oh, there we go. You did see her little pigtails are now black and glossy as well, but that's okay. We'll just pretend that she has lustrous locks. What else? Oh, remember so remember how I had to I clicked orbit to move the thing around? Again, you have to hit enter to get out of that. One small annoyance in fusion. Let's see. Her dress. Her dress is green. Let's make that a matte green. Boop. How are we doing? Alright, her ears. Now this is where we're going to start to get, in the, in, get into editing territory. That's hard to say. Plastic matte. Now, that's not quite right. Her ears aren't red. They're pink. So, let's just edit that. If you go up into this little box up here, you'll see all the materials that you're actually using. And this is pretty, this is pretty um, convenient when you, go, when you use the same things over and over again. But fortunately, in this model, there, there's nothing else that's red. So I'm just going to edit this red to actually be pink. So if I double click it, up pops this amazing little color window. Now this took me like three days before I realized what it was. I was just getting bummed out that there was no orange or pink. But you can actually assign a very specific color value to these materials and that's fantastic. So let's do that. I'm going to scroll my little bar over here to pink. And then make it a little bit more uh, stark. And there you go. That's pink. It's more fuchsia. But hey, that's pink. Pinker than red anyway. So that's great. Now, last thing we need to do is make her orange. Let's make her orange. You know what's close to orange but not quite? Yellow. So we'll turn her yellow. It's not quite right. So again, let's go up here. Double click. And we'll just move our little fader over to orange click done and you know what that is a Louise again click orbit we can get around and see oh my gosh this is fantastic you guys understand I was so excited when I was able to do this Enter. okay we've assigned colors this is fantastic but we're not done right so that's not even the good stuff right so you can do colors in Tinkercad but this kind of looks just like a hopped up Tinkercad, not a big deal. What do we want to do? We want to render it. So we can do it two different ways. What I like to do is I like to see what's happening kind of in real time, even though it slows things down. So if you click in canvas render, that basically means you're rendering, which is the final step, but you're, you're getting a pretty darn close preview of what that render is going to be in real time. So every time you change the lighting or the materials, you'll see that happening in real time. So already she looks a little bit more sort of tangible and real. Uh, you see the little pixelation. That's just because it's still uh, thinking. And on the bottom right here, you can see how close we are to being the different um, qualities. So while that's thinking, let's go ahead and mess things up. The top left, scene settings. This is where we're going to control our lights and our ambiance. First of all, that gray background's not doing really anything for me. So you can do, there's four things here that I like to do. That's the lighting, brightness, uh, where the lights come from. I guess that's it. No. Brightness of the light, where the light's coming from, the background color or picture, and the ground. Okay, so let's do the brightness first. The current lighting setup uh, is is set to default. We can change that. So, environment library. Let's just see what happens when we experiment with new lights. Yeah, cool lights, grid lights, photo booth. There's skylight, warm, cool. So I just brought in cool light, and you can already tell it's a little bit different feel. I like that. I like it, I like it. So I'm going to bump it up just a little bit more again. 
Okay, so that's our brightness and our type of light. You can also control where the light's coming from. So if you think about these, there are two lights around your object. There. Um, you can actually control the rotation of the lights so that they swivel around and you can have a little more control. So because this is so slow, I'm going to stop the in canvas render and just rely on the shadows that I see. So a little sundial. Ah, sundial Louise. That would be kind of fun. All right, so let's just go. You know what? I can already tell. I don't want. I don't want cool lights. I want grid lights. I think. Uh, let's do photo booth. Oh, dramatic. So again, I can control the rotation of the lights. Let's try that. And what did I say? Background color. Lights, where they come from. Brightness. The color. Background color. So you can do a couple different things. If you want a super simple background, you can just change the color. It's great. That's pretty stark. If you ask me, so we'll, we'll manipulate that in a sec. Or you can give her an environment. Now, if you want Louise to go on a field trip, let's do it. We'll go into our environment library, and let's just see. She's going to go to some plaza, potentially in Italy. I got European vacation. <gasps> This is the part that blew my mind first time I did uh, some of the some of the superhero stuff. Look at there. She's floating a little bit, but you can see that's pretty cool. If we go back into settings. You can change. I forgot you got to get out of that. If you go back to settings, you can, can you can change. Let's see, flatten the ground, and so she's a little bit. Zoom. And if you don't like that background, you can actually rotate it as well. Is that Paris? No. There we go. Let's escape. Bring that back in. Um, so that's cool. And I don't think for her that this is going to be the way we want to do it. So we will go back into a regular club. But that's pretty cool. You can actually do real world type uh, backgrounds. I don't know if those are editable. I don't know if you can import your own backgrounds. Let's find out. Later. Uh, so let's try this again. I think I want to do a little bit more of a softer background. So there we go. We'll just jump around here for a sec. Orbit. And zoom. Okay. So that's cool. You know what? Reflections. I like the reflections one. Because if you start to render it. Did I do this right? Yes. When you go back to the end canvas render, you can actually see again. Once you start changing these settings, then that's where the that's where the magic happens, you guys. So now we have a reflection on the ground. We have this sort of hard light coming from her left. Uh, got a shadow. I'm gonna change the roughness of the ground. Basically, that's a uh, another way to say you're diffusing the reflection on the ground. That's pretty cool. But I think this background is now weakened. So I'm going to go back to red. You know what? I'm not. I'm going to go to yellow. All right. And again, you can do this all day. I have literally spent a day uh, doing this stuff. Just playing around with different lights, uh, the brightnesses, the backgrounds, the textures. 
Um, okay, let's just walk away from that before I go down that rabbit hole. So say we've gotten this perfect. We want to render it just like so. Um, once you've set your model in the window like you want it to be, basically that's you're going to treat that as your camera. So say, uh, I can escape out of that. Say I want my camera to be right here. This is where I want my final rendering to be. Once your camera is there, if you just go up to the top and click render, here's where you get to your render settings. Now default is fine because basically what you're going to end up with is an image that's a good good enough quality to share or put on your Tinkercad account, whatever. Um, I like to do it just as large as possible because why not? So have a look at the settings. I use PNG. Um, versus JPEG, uh, Cloud Renderer, just because it's a little faster, and a final quality. Don't worry about the credits. Those are just for the paid subscription. And there we go. So while that's doing that, I think that's too bright. There we go, that should be good. But remember, we did everything in matte finish, so <clears throat> depending on your light, that's where you're gonna start to see sort of smoothness and rounded corners. Let's try some other, let's try some other materials while that's rendering. So I'll just click close, get out of there. And you can always check on that rendering down here at the gallery. Oh, it looks like it's almost done. Let's give it a shot, see what happens. Yeah, it's a little too bright. So let's try some other things. We'll go back into our appearance. And we'll, let's just get crazy. Guys, let's get crazy. We'll do a glossy on our dress. And if I'm not mistaken, you'll already be able to see a big difference on that side. Yeah. So let's try glossy white. Where am I? Glossy white. We'll do um, glossy red for ears, but that's not pink, so we're going to go back in and change that. So you can already start to see the reflections on our ears. So let's try a different light. So one thing, let's just go back to, let's try black. Everybody looks good in black. Bump that reflection down. And then... Go just a little bit brighter. And there we go. We'll do another render. Okay, while that's thinking, now we'll still we'll do some new materials. I think oh look at there, it's already gonna be it's already better. So I like her ears shiny, I like her nose shiny. See the reflection on her tail, that's pretty great. So if you do explore some of the materials, there's some pretty fantastic uh, colors and materials in here so let's just go down the top here Where's the glass but you can make her clear Look at her, she's made of glass 
This is this is what you look like as a uh, shampoo dispenser. Let's go back. Pick that green. What if she had a <clears throat> bioluminescent quality about her? Best one ever. Other emissive. Click emissive that emits. It's an emitting material. Let's see. Ooh, LED green. Now she's glowing. Uh, LED red. Let's see what happens if we can go back to pink. This is going to be cool if we take this down <laughs> to no brightness. You can actually see that the LEDs are glowing. Let's go back up just a little bit. And I believe we can change the settings of the LEDs. Yeah, LED red. Oh, luminescence. Here we go. Luminance. Yeah. Super radioactive ears. So that's pretty cool. It's the nuclear, nuclear Louise. All right, what else we got? So you can do emitting, light emitting. Uh, let's go to, oh, sparkly. I did um, Linda and her glasses. If you go to paint, there is a metal flake option for the hot rod guys. Go metal flake green. You know, I'm going to get rid of. That is a really bright LED. Go back to emissive and just do. see what happens okay our first one's done so now we can see version 2 yeah oh that's great got a little shine to her ears you start to see some volume uh, that's pretty great so let's say I'm ecstatic over this I'm not because I know what's coming and that's the LED one that's even awesomer but I can download it. If you click this little uh, download button, tell it where to save, then you have a PNG of your rendering and you can share it. You can put it on your Tinkercad uh, model page, whatever you want. Uh, it's easy peasy. And that is it. Like that's, that's all that you need to do in order to take your Tinkercad model all the way through Fusion 360 and have a realistic rendering as if it were a real thing. Now, that may not be news to a lot of you guys, but that was mind blowing for me. So you can take just a simple, simple thing and make it into a real object. In fact, you can make it into a really weird object that glows. Look, she's on fire. Uh, but it's, it's great. So uh, the reason I did this video was because I, it, last week I read in a comment uh, somebody posted that um, they were jealous of someone's model making skills because they wish they could be a video game designer. They wish they could be. Uh, they wish they could make models like uh, video games. And I and I thought, you know, all of this, what we're doing with this, um, with uh, Tinkercad and models is, is, in Fusion is is great. But really, all of this starts with the idea, and in this case, for whether character or personality or story. The, the fancy stuff like the rendering and the um, the making it move and the animation and the lights and all that that's all just kind of easy the hard part 
with all this is making something that's worthy of talking about or looking at or or watching and just like the case of like Bob's Burgers I I love the show I think it's a great story I think the characters are really funny um, but it's not it's not the most realistically rendered best drawn thing ever like it's 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 wonderful but in terms of, of craft like it's not the, the most complicated thing ever this is simple shapes and colors but the story and the characters are so compelling and awesome that all of that bundled together makes it fantastic and so that's just my argument uh, and a bit of a soapbox with this is that you don't have to be a professional uh, graphic artist or industrial designer to make something that's worth looking at or worth watching it all starts with a compelling character or an idea or a story um, and with that you sort of build up this sim simple thing into a thing that's again worth watching and paying attention to so that's all I want to say about that and uh, if you guys have any questions about this process drop us a line either send a comment or tweet us I'm at Andy Taylor Ed uh, you can get uh, or uh, at Tinkercad, and we get all those tweets. Um, I hope this was informative. We're going to do some more stuff from Tinkercad to Fusion. I think there's some pretty cool workflows, um, and they're not too overly complicated. And uh, until next time, tinker away.